Hey y'all, it's Anime Gaming, and today I'm gonna be live reacting to Sonic Gear XV Episode 9, and I'm gonna start this live reaction in 1, 0, GO! Let's see. Oh, it's Miku. Why does this feel like Death Flags? Like, seriously. Oh man, I'm really feeling some eeriness going on. Eerie things. And hopefully they continue being that way. Come on, Ibiki, do not jinx Miku to her death. Then you can get it back! No! Fuck! What do you mean by a terrible conclusion? Why is Ibiki narrating this as if this is gonna end really, really badly? Hopefully, right now, the monologue Hibiki's having is of the current events going on. Hopefully, it's that. Because if Hibiki is narrating, because all the, the narration that she's giving out, it's as if she's talking in the past tense. Hopefully, the situation is so dire that she's talking in the present tense. But, fuck. That doesn't seem really good for Miku, though. Especially with um, Shem Hop possessing Miku's body. That shit is. Uh, oh, fuck. I blame Fudo for all of this. Fuck that old fuck. Alright. Just had to say that. Fuck Fudo. Alright. Alright, let's see what we're gonna get this time. Da da da. Oh, and I always love that portion of the opening. It's so epic! Ah, oh, da. Okay. I can only hope I don't... I don't jinx Miku to her death, but those feel like death lags. I mean, lately though, the accidental jinxes I've been doing have been going so haywire because I remember in a live reaction to Adabuda hoping there isn't any NTR, but then I mentioned during those live reactions, those look like NTR. And what do you know? There's a possibility of NTR happening in that series, so. Hopefully the same thing doesn't happen to Song Figure XV. Where the... Why does this look all happy? Okay, so I wonder, is this in the past or the present? That's cool though to see the father actually provide food for Hibiki to see some nice bonding. Wait, what the fuck? They actually went through the house arrest. Hmm. <laughs> I like how he's... Oh. Well, I actually wouldn't mind seeing Hibiki's father give some sage-like advice to her daughter. Okay. <laughs> oh! Uh, that's pretty random. Oh, damn. <gasps> Could that be Miku? Yes, our girl! Beat that Shemla. Shemha, foo. Oh, 
Oh my lord. Oh! Holy shit! I didn't see that coming! Yo! Cloud Shadow Weave. The fuck? Fuck, Fudo! God, I... I didn't even think it was possible to hate him even more! I mean, at least I figured it out, though. I mean... ah, Chris has got the right idea. Yes! Hmm. Oh, I thought that was my phone for a sec. Kinda sounds like it. Comes to the command center immediately. Hmm. Okay, that looks ominous. Hopefully he ain't trapped for Maria. I mean... Huh? To control. That's like completely unethical though. That's actually a good question. Oh, okay. I like how they're expanding the Fost robe stuff. And he's just all smiling evilly. <laughs> he's even got the evil jungle thing going on. It's like he was practicing for this shit. All this time. Man, poor Subasa though, I mean. Whoa. In a way, I like how that scene does give you Fudo's sense. It gives you his sense of philosophy where he believes that that power can't really be attained through negotiation but through force and that sequence right there. So I really did love that dialogue when he's like, songs can't save the world. Coming off of Fudo's perspective. And I actually do like that, at the very least, even though Subasa's under the hypnosis, at the very least, you see her resisting. So I do love that. Oh. What the? Yo! That is wild! I love how she's calling them out. But at the same time, I do like... Yes! For real! Fuck yes! Spoken like a true sis. I mean sis as in like friend-wise, sisterhood, you know? Ha! <laughs> how is he giving up so easily? <laughs> I wasn't thinking there! Look at all fucking cool and then taking it back. <laughs> all right. Oh, we're getting the epic music. Something epic's probably gonna happen. I'm loving this. The only thing I'm worried about is if this building is being guarded by Alkan noise, armed forces aren't going to be really effective. That's the only thing I'm worried about. I fucking knew it! They should've... Damn! The only problem is if there's more Alkan noise. Anymore. What the?! I mean, I guess um, Fudo probably does have a good amount of influence 
even despite all these circumstances. Though, here's the thing though, even if they raid this house, what's there to guarantee that there's no noise? Yo! We got a Sedentino 5 foot hole! Oh, jeez! Oh, wow! Oh, fuck yes! Oh! Okay, if this happens, I'm gonna fanboy the fuck out. Talk about unfair though, Fudo has a sword and Gendro's just using his own fist. Oh my, and I love how you see Saturn in the background too, it actually makes it look much more epic. Good, good. All right, she's seen through all this bullshit. I like it. And you know what makes this really, the sequence really, really good? You gotta remember, Sabasa actually wanted Maria to sing with her. And. Yeah, and that's what makes it really, really good. This time we see Tsubasa and Maria spend with each other. Whoa! Yeah, I'm just attacking all so I like the hedgehog style! Jeez! Yeah, it even sounds like the Sonic spin thing! <laughs> Yeah, sounds like the spin dash um, sound effect. Yes! It looks like she got rid of that mind fuck state that she was in. Ah. Uh. Poor girl, though. I mean... On the upside, though, at least she's seemingly going back to normal. So that's what really, truly matters. Yo! What the fuck? He's able to fucking just... Touch that so gently. <laughs> He's not even operating a sofa girl with a Faust robe. How? No, how? You don't fuck. I'm not going to question this. I'm just going to enjoy the epicness. All right, Gendro's got this. He's disarmed now. Fudo's disarmed. He's got this. Or is Genjiro still alive and just knocked the fuck out? Fuck, I need to know now! Ah, oh, shit. I mean, in a way, I would rather... Oh, shit. You know, I wouldn't mind this. As long as Fudo gets fucked over Sama and our heroes win, I'm fine with this. Anything. Bitch, get the fuck out of here. What the? Oh. 
Okay. This is getting really, really gnarly now. Yeah, the seal. Yo, his own daughter. No. Oh, fuck. No, what the fuck? No, not the dad. No. Oh, Lord. And he was. How is he smiling at the prospect of his, of him shooting his own son? What? Aww. Aww. God, man, that was... That was the best way of going out. Sabasa's father was a fucking. He was a G2. He was a badass. How is he gleefully smiling though? Is he. Is he that pure evil? Yes! Okay! I want to see Subasa just fucking just kick the ass of Fudo. Fucking, I hate him now. One of the evilest Sampa Gear villains in this series by far. I feel disgusting. Yes. This right here, y'all, is how you you reuse a transformation sequence with coming right after an emotional sequence. Filled with a lot of emotional intensity. I love it! Hell yeah! <laughs> oh, yes! How the. Oh, okay, okay. Nah, Sabato should be able to win because all things considered Fudo is a bit older so that should affect Fudo's athleticism. What? Where's that energy coming from? Where's that energy coming from? What? Yeah, I don't even... Holy shit! What is that? Is he like doing some kind of jutsu? <laughs> what the fuck? Kind of looked like he was doing some kind of like um, Naruto style jutsu. <laughs> How is resisting a self gear like that? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Hopefully, Maria saved her. I hope. Oh, finally they got something approved. All right, all right, all right. Oh, now that looks beautiful.
No, it just feels like if they leave Fudo alive, he's gonna do some more evil shit, though. That's the thing. I understand where Genjiro's coming from, but... Oh... I like how we just casually open a citrus fruit. <laughs> Damn it, at least give your daughter a hug before she goes off. Shit. Oh. Aw, seeing Hibiki as a little girl is cute. I actually like that, so <clears throat> I think that's probably advice that's gonna help Ibiki out a lot. Hmm. This <laughs> too. <laughs> 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 You know, I'm probably gonna quote that. I love. Okay, I admit, that was a swaggerific sequence from Hibiki's dad. No! Damn! Alright, that episode, shit. Another 10 out of 10 episode, holy fuck! We. Oh, oh my! I mean, we made a lot of progression because in the span of an episode, we got Shemha. She pretty much killed all the remnants of Noble Red in like the span of a few seconds. I'm like, what? That shit was crazy! All Frieza style, even with like the laser ring. It reminded me of in Frieza. Um, a Manamic Saga pretty much um, hit Krillin with the beam and just blew him the fuck up. And then he being Piccolo. It gave me those type of vibes and I fucking loved it. Shit. And at the same time, I like it too because for one, it kind of has the message of you shouldn't really fuck with things that are... You shouldn't really fuck with certain things that are completely dangerous and you don't have a complete grasp of. Kind of like how the episode has the message of that, because Noble Red, they tried to control Shemha, despite the dangers of it, they were trying to do it too quickly, and Shemha got pissed and just slaughtered them. So I kind of like that. Oh, okay. We're having an after credit scene. Oh, shit. I didn't see this coming. What? Oh, fuck, that was so good, good. Ah, uh, it just gets me pumped up to see why, why is that beacon just glowing right now? Oh, fuck. All right. So that's why I thought we made a lot of plot progression because now we got the beam, which I'm assuming is Shem Ha. She's about to do her shit, evil shit. And additionally, we have a major death. We have Genjiro's bro die. <laughs> it's trying to protect trying to shield Tsubasa, so I do like that. And additionally, you have Tsubasa, at least for a bit, get out of her funk because now she's realized that, yeah, to protect someone, you protect them because they're worth protecting, and I do like that, too, in a way, in this episode. So, you also get progression from that standpoint. And additionally, Fudo being a traitor was revealed to our main cast in this episode. So this episode didn't nick around. It was like important scene after important scene after important scene after important scene after important scene. So that's how I felt from a plot standpoint. It was just nothing but like quick, quick progression. And then from a story standpoint, it was captivating. All the fights had purpose. Like Genjiro versus Fudo looked pretty epic. And then Fudo stepping in the way to make sure that Sabasa doesn't kill 
I mean, not Fudo. I mean, what am I saying? And then Ganjiro stepping in the way so that Sabasa doesn't kill Fudo was also an interesting sequence, too. He doesn't want to see Sabasa dirty your hands. Was a good sequence, even though while I feel like should have just let Tsubasa go through with just slaughtering Fudo, I can see where Genjiro is coming from, you know? So I do like that. And just all these bits made for a spectacular episode. Even the bits where Hibiki's talking to her dad were emotional in a way because you get to see them spend time with each other too. And I really like that. And the advice that he gave to her daughter was nice too. So that's why I love this episode. And from a character standpoint, it was great. You get to see Maria become more assertive when she went deep in first to try to like convince Subas to like try to get Subasa back to normal. And that slap scene was really good. You got to see more of Fudo's evilness as he was fucking just smiling gleefully when when Genjiro's bro died. That was like crazy as hell. It gave him more characterization. And we get to see Shem Hain someone to reckon with because it looks like now she's gonna do her own shit. So a lot of character